Hello guys, uh, glad to have you all on board today for another FU Money, so welcome all. Um, today I hope to have a really quick video, just a small update since yesterday. So nothing really crazy happening on the charts and let's go to screen share. So here's the price to time model. We are still on top of the 2017 cycle. No big news there. Uh, just one thing that I forgot to mention yesterday, I believe. If we go to the right side of the 2017 cycle, that means that we could not be on track anymore for October as the biggest probability of achieving a top. So that means that we probably will continue rising the price action, but extend it a little bit more in time. So probably we will fail the um, first half or second half of October as it was expected before. So for us to be on track or for Bitcoin to be on track with the price action, for the price to time model to be accurate, we would need the price action to be in between the 2017 cycle, which is represented by the yellow candle pattern here and the exponential trend, uh, not trend, sorry, the exponential uh, curve line here inside the uh, rectangle. So basically this space here in between those two uh, areas, those two lines, this space in the middle would be uh, um, the best the best price action that we could have for the current cycle in order to be on track with the price of time model. So that means that if we extend the accumulation period for some more time and we go uh, below the yellow candle pattern, that means that we could be a bit delayed uh, as comparing to the actual top that the price to time model predicted. So um, that's it. That's what I was going to say yesterday and I completely forgot to mention this. So I hope we can still be on track. Uh, but if we go to the right side, we probably will not be on track for October, which doesn't mean that we could not achieve a top this year because after October, you still have November and you still have December. So two more months. And even if we are delayed for a few more weeks, probably it could be achieved still this year. If not, well, next year is also very close. So I don't mind any way to achieve a top uh, soon. Uh, not in 2024 or 23, like some people say. So <clears throat> regarding the price of time model, that's what I have for you guys today. And the RSI continues to have some difficulties to get back to the 2013 mid-cycle crash, 75% crash uh, here, uh, represented by this orange dashed line. So we are still trying to recover, but still a bit away from that orange dashed line. So let's see when will be the uh, right moment for the RSI, the weekly RSI on the price to time model to reach the same level as the mid uh, mid cycle crash of 2013, the 75% correction that you guys know already. So that's it for the price to time model. Let's go quickly to the MRI strategy. And here I have something to say also. I'm starting to lose faith in this uh, candle, the MRI bottom candle, which is represented by the green arrow and the number one, the green number one here on top of that candle. I'm starting to lose a bit of faith in this candle to have the breakout uh, this week, which means this candle having uh, making the breakout of the triangle. So I don't see enough strength, I don't see enough volume to in order for this candle to be the candle that will break out of the triangle to the upside. So I'm a bit uh, disappointed with this MRI bottom, but it does not mean that we could not see a breakout next week. Instead of having the breakout with this candle, we could have uh, during the next candle. So I'm still waiting for that, but I will explain to you guys what this yellow arrow is on the daily, which is just next to this chart. And we still have the probability of reaching a bit new low, not probably not a new low, because when that happens, if this is uh, still during this week, it could be just a bit of a new low. But I, I bet the 50 period SMA will support the price, which is uh, the SMA is coming up 
uh, in a fury. So it's almost almost reaching the same level as this uh, bottom here. So I hope that the probabilities are diminishing that we have a new low because every time the 50 period SMA goes up, those probabilities are um, in, in a, a, a lesser percentage than right now. So in fact, this is a good thing also. Uh, I bet this is below 10% already. Uh, I did not um, make any calculations today, but I would say it's below the 10% chances that we still have a new low below this one here at uh, 29,600. So uh, I see that the future is probably the biggest probability will be some accumulation. Probably we will retouch the bottom of the triangle and then have a breakout sooner. Not this week, probably, but probably next week. So a few more days, just two more days to start a new candle. Let's see what happens there. So that's it for the weekly chart. We have the RSI just going sideways and the MACD continues to be bearish, but we see that the bars are not having a gap anymore. So this is a good sign. As you guys know, the MACD is a bit laggy. So this could mean that we are soon to see a breakout, but probably it will take some more time to show up here on the MACD. So let's go to the daily chart. I will just mention uh, what's happening with this yellow arrow. So just to be completely clear and, you know, guys, I, I don't like to hide any trade. So today I had a new trade. You guys know that yesterday I went all in. In fact, not yesterday, but the night before, uh, just after uh, releasing the video, the two videos ago. And then this morning when I saw that the breakout was probably not going to happen because we don't have enough volume, there is not enough strength to go out of the triangle right now, I decided to sell my position. So I sold a big position of BTC this morning, not this morning, around 12.30 Portuguese time. So it was already afternoon, but I'm waiting for this to happen. So this is uh, one of the probabilities which I consider very, very, very likely to happen. Uh, that we still touch the bottom of this triangle at least one more time and then probably next week. So after Monday or during the, the week that is coming, we will have a breakout finally of the triangle, probably to retest the top of the triangle again, then breaking this trend line, which was supporting the price around here, but it broke to the downside. Then we could also retest that trend line and continue up to the biggest and biggest resistance of all resistances. The mother of all resistances that we are going to find will start around the 48K to 51K. This will be a very, very strong resistance. If we get there soon, this will be a big fight for Bitcoin to overcome. So this is what I believe and, and um, don't mind about the timings. So this, the tip of the arrow is basically basically uh, on the 30th of June, so just uh, before July starts. But I was not thinking uh, really about the timing. I was just thinking about the price structure that we could have. So this arrow could be extended into July uh, and with no problems, we could still have the same price structure. So uh, regarding the price action on the daily chart, this is what I believe could happen. That's why I sold my position here when I understood that it would be very, very difficult to break out the triangle right now, but we could do it next week. So no problems. If this fails, if this probability I have here with the yellow arrow fails, I could still uh, catch up again and get back into the market with that position if a breakout occurs before this probability happens. So I don't mind at all. There's no problem. I don't lose any money doing that. Uh, I just prepare myself right now. So I have a plan. If we go to the bottom of the triangle, I have a plan to rebuy that position. Uh, if we don't go to the bottom of the triangle, I will try to catch the uh, the lowest point of this uh, um, correction inside the triangle. And if I cannot do that also, I will, of course, get back into the market when the breakout occurs. So no problem there. I don't lose anything. And it's good for me to have this plan, which you guys should also have always a plan for different probabilities, as I've been mentioning in my videos previously.
So the RSI in the daily is also going sideways. There is no movement. The volatility is, uh, volatility is very low at the moment. The MACD continues to be a bit bullish on the daily, but nothing really substantial. Uh, so that's it for the daily chart. Let's just check the four hour chart to see how the BitMEX funding rate is behaving today. So the BitMEX funding rate is just a bit, just a bit, a hair above zero. Uh, it's about, let me check here, 0 0.005. Uh, so not, not really uh, substantial uh, leverage occurring now. Um, in the four hour chart also, you can see the, you know, the yellow arrow here. Uh, actually, I was right for the first four hours after I sold my position, but now there's a bit of a support here that does not allow the price to continue to go down to check again uh, to retouch the bottom of the triangle. So I'm still waiting for developments here and I'm looking at the charts closely today. So let's see what happens uh, regarding the chart. There is some sign that we could have this retracement I was talking about and going a bit uh, to the downside again inside the triangle because the four hour chart shows that the bullish momentum is uh, fading a bit. So you guys can see here, although the RSI is going sideways, you guys can see that uh, in the MACD, the blue line is, um, you know, closing the gap with the orange line and the bars are decreasing. So the momentum for the bulls is decreasing a bit and I expect a short retracement, uh, not going out of the triangle, perhaps. I don't believe that we are going to break out the triangle to the downside. The probabilities are very, very small but we could still go back down to retouch the bottom of the triangle. Let's see if that happens. So the four hour chart, that's it. Nothing else to say. Let me just confirm on the one hour if the BitMEX funding rate is actually that. So let's see here, uh, just a bit higher, 0 0.008. So the average of the four hour is not exactly accurate, but we check the one hour just to see if that happens. So that's it for the MRI. Let me check if I have anything to say on the Pro Indicators framework. So we have the same triangle here. Basically, it's the same chart, but with a different indicator and a different framework. Uh, we have been having resistance, not only by the, the trend line of the top of this triangle, but also the trend channel of the Pro Indicators framework is also creating this resistance here. So we still have a bit of space to the downside. And if you guys can see here, the trend channel that is plotted by the indicator gives me this line around here, just a bit out of the triangle, gives me as resistance and the green zigzag line here, down here, just close to this blue horizontal line gives me the bottom for the support of the price action at the moment. So you guys can see that right now uh, we have a bigger uh, interval of space to the downside than to the uh, to the upside, which gives me more probabilities of a retracement and probabilities of touching the bottom of the triangle again. So the Pro Indicators framework also gives me the momentum going down. Uh, the bears are still in control as comparing to the bulls. So uh, the you know the uh, order book has been um, the orders for uh, selling Bitcoin right now are uh, have more volume than the orders to buy. So in fact, we are still under the control of the bears until we finally have uh, a breakout out of this triangle. So that's it for the Pro Frameworks uh, indicator. Let's just check the dollar and this stubborn, this stubborn fiat currency, which I cannot stand anymore, continues to obey the MRI bottom and now it's going up. So I was hoping that this week could be just a fake out out of this support here, but I guess the dollar is going up and probably will close the week in two days uh, at higher levels than the previous week's uh, closes. So this, 
this uh, stupid fiat currency continues to be stubborn and i'm losing my patience with the dollar because i would love to see it go below the 89 on the dixie the dxy index for the dollar so let's see what happens of course i'm joking but you guys know that i'm really really anxious about seeing the dollar below this orange rectangle let's see if that happens soon it would be great for bitcoin okay let me just check gold and we continue on the one to four candle correction the mri top was respected by gold we continue to go down actually i don't expect it to go below the 50 period sma because gold has been also uh, been very strong during the last few weeks and so i i would say that we could have a one to four candle correction but not going below the 50 period sma uh, which is what the indicator would say could happen so that's it for gold no big news there gold moves very very slowly so you guys know that we are still in this correction and it might uh, take one more week probably maximum two according to the mri rules so let's see if this could be just the uh you know the wave two of the beginning of the wave three of this uh trend up in gold Okay, so let's check the SMP. The SMP continues to have the all time highs uh, as comparing to the level of the MRI top. So we are above it. So I see a lot of strength here for the SMP. And probably, Tonevase already said it, probably this is going to break out to the upside uh, in a fury. So I'm also expecting this to happen. Let's see how the situation evolves for the SMP. Uh, I believe that the strength of the SMP is very, very high right now. So the probability of a breakout to the upside is very probable. But anything else but that, I, I would not be able to say because we don't have any more indications of what's going to happen. So let's see here, uh, the last but not least, uh, of the charts we have this chart which i like very much because of the daily macd which showed us some time ago uh, around the 23rd of may showed us the lowest of the lowest in bitcoin's history uh negative 5100 on the macd daily the daily macd sorry and we are still going up and the green bars continue to form here so let's see where this takes us i still expect a small retracement i would love a small retracement again to this trend line here before we break out of the triangle so here it is this is the same triangle as i showed you before that bottom part of the triangle basically comes from this trend line that starts around march 2020 and uh, supported the price right here when we had the big crash of April and May. <clears throat> so here it is. This is the same triangle. I'm still expecting a small retracement to the trend line before a breakout could occur. And, and if we don't break out of the triangle to the downside, of course. So no one knows what's going to happen. No one can predict the future. You just have to have a plan for each of the probabilities that you consider when you make your technical analysis. So my probabilities uh, tell me that the probability of going up when breaking out of the triangle are bigger than going down. However, going down is still a possibility. You guys know that. And I said this many times. So let's see how the situation evolves. Have a plan if the price goes out of the triangle to the upside and you should also have a plan if the price action goes to the downside when breaking out of the triangle and that is what makes a good trader a good trade is not the one that can predict the future because it's impossible to predict the future or to know the future no one knows the future a good trader is the one that has different plans for different probabilities and you should always have this in mind when uh, planning your strategies so guys that's it for today let me stop screen share go back to the main screen uh, i hope let's see we are around 19 minutes already so i was expecting to have a shorter video was impossible to do it because there was a bit more to say so guys i will say goodbye for today i'm not even going to use the words of the uh sarge uh, but I guess you remember them. Uh, so just, just to tell you before we go, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the Telegram group. It's been a success so far. So we have been 
open for a week i guess one week or just a bit less than that already almost 100 subscribers don't forget to subscribe to that telegram group where you can discuss your trades and your strategies with me and all everyone there uh, you just have to go to a browser and go to t.me slash fu money or just search for fu money on your telegram app which is very easy also to do uh, if you enjoy this content of course don't forget to gently touch the like button and subscribe to the channel if you are new and i hope to see you here tomorrow don't forget guys tomorrow is the live stream of uh saturday uh saturday usually we have a live stream so don't forget it's tomorrow and i will publish the exact time when it starts on twitter as usual on the telegram group and everywhere else i can think of so i'll see you guys tomorrow have a nice day bye bye